All right, now we finally got to the balance sheet. So um, this is a snapshot in time. So on the day that it's issued, this tells you where your cash is, what your assets and liabilities are. And the reason it's called a balance sheet is that the two numbers on the assets and liability side have to add up and be equal. So over here, left side is assets. And it's done in ascending order based on liquidity. Now liquidity is a fancy word for how fast you can convert something into cash. So let's say you have pure cash, that would be the most liquid, whereas if you had land, it would take some time if you wanted to sell it. So you have cash, number one, and then you have our friend, accounts receivable. And he, even though he's in, even though he's in the hands of our customers, we're going to get it. So we don't worry about the 30-day um, terms. We, we know we're going to get it. And if we don't know we're going to get it, then we take an accrual, which means we, somebody might not be willing to pay us or capable of paying us. Uh, cash, accounts receivable, inventory. So um, this is just parts. Now, in the inventory, we have uh, two types of inventory. One is WIP which stands for work in progress and that is pretty much like half or fractional done the um, you, you um, the, the work or the product is incomplete work in progress and then the other one is um, finished goods and this is when you're done the product is finished goods the product is ready to ship you might not have orders but it's all sitting there like it's a car waiting in the in, in the lot um, done and so this these are the two types of inventory on your assets you can also have like I said land buildings and then if you buy a really expensive piece of equipment like a CNC mill or lathe uh, you can have tooling over here so like when you buy a copy machine you don't you don't uh, capitalize it you don't say it's uh, an asset you just treat it as like a computer or a piece of paper so but very expensive tooling um, you can have on your assets. Liabilities. Okay, now uh, here's a case where we have debt. So if we owe a bank some money, uh, we have our accounts payable. Even though we have terms, meaning that we don't have to pay instantly, we can pay them in 30 days, we owe the money. There's nothing you can do to get around to that. <laughs> you owe the money. Um, taxes. So if you haven't, if taxes aren't quite paid, you still own the federal government. You, you have to put them on there so there you can't, can't avoid that. Uh, and then what you have is the difference between assets and liability is shareholder wealth. So do the shareholders actually, do the shareholders actually have a positive have more assets and liabilities and then that so that's actually a nice thing for the shareholders and these two numbers have to equal each other so assets minus liabilities is shareholder wealth just do we actually have some this is company worth something um, this is a balance sheet this is reported with the income statement on a quarterly basis by all public companies now private companies they don't have to say anything those are a uh, big difference um, between the two and uh, with a public company, you actually can buy and sell shares uh, fluidly, and you can't do that with a private company. So let's, I want to go into a thing that I, I, I think is going to cause some real trouble uh, with oil depletion. And the first one is something that has, was very promoted uh, when I was growing up in the 80s, and it was just in time. And what that meant was you would you would have coordination, very precise coordination, and the delivery of parts. So these are all your parts coming from all different vendors, and you would bring them all exactly to a location at a precise time where you would build a product or warehouse in the case of Walmart, and then you would very rapidly send it to the customer. And you would try to keep this stuff on your in your inventory as, as short as possible. So when you, when you had a, a coordinated system of bringing the parts in, building it rapidly, and shipping it to the customer, that's called turns. And if you're a good operations guy, 
you can get like a dozen turns a year. And what that means is you've, you've brought parts in, you've spun them, and you've got them out to the customer, and you're getting 12 of those cycles in every year, which is depends what it is, but that's a very good clip. Now, the problem is when you get oil depletion and you start getting shortages, this part here could be a week late. So this guy gums the whole network up because without this one part, you you got to hold this stuff and your inventory goes up, your whip or your inventory. Now, the other thing that can happen with oil depletion is you just can't make a part. It's like you don't have the plastic. So if, if you have a shortage of oil and somebody gets constrained on plastic, they they get weeks or behind. Or So now you have you have trucking delays and you have parts delays. And what this does is it blows up your inventory. So if we look over here at our assets, so when we have our assets, well, what, what's got to happen if inventory goes up, then cash, which is the only, only thing that can respond, is going down. You, your cash is being consumed in whip. Um, or if you can't pretty much whip, um, it's, it's, this is going up and this is going down. Now on the other side, this is, this is the balance sheet indication, but on the other side, on the income statement, your COGS, your cost of goods, are going up because it's now just the fact that oil is more expensive, the cost of the product is more expensive. Now, what's happening here are your gross margins are dropping because unless you raise your prices, the, the COGS will climb up and your gross margins will drop, which goes right to your... Um, after-tax profit. You, you know that this has got to be high or your after-tax profit, your earnings, will drop. Now, once again, if you want to raise your price, we know, based on the supply and demand curve, your volume will go down. So, this is going, these analysts, these Wall Street analysts will be able to spot these things in a minute. They'll say, okay, I'm seeing, like I said, everything's going wrong. The cash positions, the inventory's going up, the cogs are going up. You can see this in the income statement. You, the margins are dropping. Uh, if you're trying to maintain margins, you've got volume going down. Um, this is where you see, I don't know which company will be immune from this. Any manufacturing company or any vending company like Walmart, if these things don't, don't arrive in their, their, um, in, a, in their warehouses at a coordinated time, they'll They'll have, the warehouses will bulk up, the inventory will bulk up. So um, I think that you know we've got Hubert's Peak, right? So we've got Hubert's Peak, and then we have this conservation phase for a decade, and then things get start getting bumpy, where the the richer companies buy their way through, um, you know, buy their way through the, the the oil depletion. But if these analysts, if these analysts, they see they see a trend where their companies the ones they're watching, if those are trending down and they don't see any, they're aware now of oil depletion because the, the people have seen the peak and the, 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 the stories in the, in the news will be, you know, they'll be prevalent. And if they see all this stuff going bad, they'll issue sell orders. They will say sell because the way it works in business is you buy low and sell high. So if you believe that your, your earnings are going to get beat up, and your cash is going to get depleted, um, you're, you're, I got to get out of the stock. You, the, when you know something's going to go down, you sell it. You buy low, sell high. And all it will take is a series of trends in here before the Wall Street analysts collectively say, let's get out of the market. And when you have people selling, that drops your price. So I don't think this is going to, I don't think it's going to take that long before they figure it out. I, I don't think this is a decade. This might be a couple of years before all the companies start trending down. So, um, I you know that it, it's just it's just the way it works. It's just you buy low, sell high, and you you want to get out of something that's going to be always going down. So that's that's balance sheets and that's income statements and that's just just in time and um, gross margin. That's all. See you.